Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a keyboard that I've been wanting to take a look at for a while. Now, I had heard, but I never had my hands on version one of this. I've heard a lot of good things about this keyboard and I'm really looking forward to taking a look at it. Today, we're gonna be reviewing the Akko PC75B Plus version two. That's a mouthful. Black and gold edition. Um, so it comes with the ASA keycaps. And if if I know Akko well, it has the extra one. So you, a lot of times with pre-built, as I've said before, I kind of just think of the pre-built as a bare bone because I'm usually going to get rid of the switches and the keycaps. I'm not going to use them. Now, granted, most pre-builts come with, let's say, not the best keycaps or switches. So... We're in a little bit of a different situation here because we're actually dealing with Akko. And personally, um, Akko switches and Akko keycaps, I've never had any issues with. Um, there's some of their older switches that, I don't want to say, they just there were issues with consistency across different batches. Um, but I haven't experienced that in in uh, batches of switches that I've bought, I'd say over in the, la in the last year. There's are more batches of switches that I've had for a couple of years, at least a couple of years, if not more, that just aren't as consistent as I'd like them to be. But I think they fixed that. They've been coming up with a lot of new switches. They took a look at the yellow and um, the uh, cream yellow. I also have the cream blue. And I like these both. They're actually nice. They're the first that are... They kind of break out of the Akko clacky mold and go a little bit deeper. So they've upgraded the yellow V3 Pro with a dust proof stem. And they also have upgraded the blue. Taking a look at those newer switches, revisions as well. I'm going to be doing a comparison um, between the V3s and those. Because the V3s, I mean, I want to say they came out six months ago. And I know these have been out for a couple of months, maybe. Probably about a six, six month window. So, um... I haven't even taken those out to play with, but like I said, I haven't lubed either the regular or the V3 non-pro yellow or blues, and I've enjoyed them both. I actually bought two sets of the blues. So let's uh, let's go ahead and talk talking about the switches, and we got a switch in here that I haven't uh, had a chance to play with yet. So again, let's go ahead and dive into the Akko PC75 B Plus version two. All right, so just taking a look at the outside of the box, we see that we have a very common and popular 75% layout with your knob. Uh, you have your F13 or your delete key. I prefer the delete key there, um, as well as the navigation cluster with the four keys. I'm partial to having four, having a three or two. It's kind of like, oh, uh, now I got to decide where I'm going to put those other keys here. At least I'm able to get to um, the most important keys. Usually I leave it like that home and end with page up, page down in the middle. As long as I got delete here and I remap the, the under layer of delete for insert. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so we've got the standard layout. We've got the ASA uh, black keycaps. I do believe, I want to say they're PVT, but don't quote me on that. I, I go through so many keycaps. It's like, when I found out that one of the MT3 sets that I have is actually PBT and the rest are ABS, I was like, wait a minute, I thought they were all ABS. But anyway, looking over here real quick, we got your standard stuff, their website, and the switch that we're using here, which is the Crystal Switch, which I have not had a chance to take a look at yet. All right, so before we dive into the keyboard, I just want to take a real quick look at the accessories that we have included. All right. Oh. So we've got a switch puller, and we got a keycap puller. I don't see a switch puller though. Huh. We have a USB A to C cable with caps on it. Um, we have a switch or a keycap puller, and we have the extra keys. Now this is not a full keycap set, um, but this is a lot of novelty keys that you could switch out almost all of the. Um, you know, the 1.75 U's, it's 2 U's, so it's got not a full set, mind you, but a pretty complete set at that 
And we also have the uh, 2.4 uh, gigahertz receiver. Um, it does say Aco Plus, but it's purple. Um, in this case, I know they changed the keycaps and everything, but it'd be nice if it was like gold or something to distinguish which one it was for. And we also have a switch puller and the um, manual, which uh, we'll keep out handy just in case we need it. You know, one of the things that I do appreciate about Akko is that, I mean, these are the quality assurance tags and uh, it means somebody went through and made sure that everything that's supposed to be in here is, and I like that. I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, Akko is the only one that does that. I don't think I've seen that with any other manufacturer. No. Have I? Not that I can recall any. So we have the keyboard, and it does have what I like that a lot of companies are doing this now, including dust covers. So let's take it out of its PE foam bag and see what we got. And here we are with the PC75B. And I gotta say, it feels very nice. And I like that knob. <laughs> that is a um, that is a one big boy of a knob and I actually have some bigger knobs that that'll fit I think on here um, I gotta say I wasn't sure from the pictures but it is it does have a translucence to it but being that it's PC it feels really nice barely any flex to it whatsoever so it's nice and sturdy um, it does appear to be clipped on but I don't know. That'll be for another video when we open it up today. It's all stock. So let's, uh, before we turn on anything, let's go ahead and take a look at these stabilizers and see what we've got. Ooh. I, I see a lot of things that I like here. So we have a PC plate. We have plate mounted stabilizers that are lubricated. I mean, they've been dabbed at the top there. Uh, it's not necessarily properly lubricated, but it does have lube. So let's go ahead and take a look at this switch. It does look like we have, hmm, might be PE, but it's most likely IPXE foam. We have north facing, and we have the crystal switch, the completely clear. It's a decent little linear. I gotta say, I like it. Uh, this is only my second, I'm sorry, third completely clear switch, but so far it's definitely the nicer one. I like the actuation. It is only a three pin, but it is practically completely see through. I don't think it's qu not quite long pole, but it has a nice bottom out, nice and crisp. I wanted to check something real quick because I know I'll get asked. Go ahead and take these. Oh, these stabilizers are in there. I mean, they are attached. They are not going anywhere. All right. Unfortunately, we do not have screw-in holes for plate or PCB mounted stabilizers. So we will have to stick with the PCB or the plate mounted stabilizers that thankfully are very well made and they attach quite well and what's locked they're not going anywhere now when i come back to it i will probably take them apart and clean the clean up the um just make the lubrication a little bit more even let's go ahead and stick you back in there Use a bit of tuning, but they're not bad for a pre built. Let's take a look at the space bar. So, here we can see we have a nice oh, hmm, seems more like a foam instead of a silicone rubber between the plate and the PC beam. And that's probably going to have to be removed if we want to take those stabilizers out. And then it does look like we have 
if I had to guess, a silicon pad in the um, below the PCB in the case for stock. Does not sound bad at all. Has a bit of thinness to it, but I know that's something that could be taken care of uh, with a little bit of modding. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what these. Uh, oh, wait a minute. USB, Windows, and Mac. All right, there we see the translucency that we have some side RGB. Ooh, that is some bright RGB. That is looking very, very nice. Um, it it works because the translucency on this case is a little bit darker than most of the black translucent, which I think they call either carbon or smoke or charcoal. Um, this one's almost completely um, opaque, but it has enough transparency to come through. Now, I do see this was an issue with the... Um, 5075 these lights right here uh, it's not going to do anything because it's trying to pair wanting to pair it's not paired um see how there's light bleed and it's coming off on both sides there was a fix that somebody posted on budget cubes they basically took a straw cut it and put it around the light so that it only shun shown up and that was it so I, I, i'm going to send Akko the link to that because I think that's something that that it's it's coming across on different uh, a couple of different models. So that's something that should probably take be taken care of. The wheel is nice; it's metal with the inner collar, but it does seem to have wiggle. Now, I don't know if that's the knob or oh, yeah, that's not the knob. I was going to replace the knob, thinking that it was loose, but. The knob's not the one that's loose, it's the actual stem. And it doesn't look like it's the base, I think it's just the stem itself. Um, I'm not quite sure why Akko does not use metal stems. Uh, it's, it's a plastic stem. It worries me that it could, um, could break, but a lot of people... Is it supposed to do that? I'll have to take a look at that. I'll have to load up the Akko Cloud Driver. I haven't taken a look at it in quite a minute. So I'll have to get updated on that. But so far I can see great stabilizers. Love the PC plate. Love the PC body. Um, the switch I like, but... I'm curious where that, that tone is coming from now. As far as flexiness goes, let's try it like this. It doesn't seem to be that much flex at all, and I'm curious, and I'm going to have to find out if this is actually on a daughter board or if it's part of the main PCB, as it's not quite clear enough for me to see. Let's get technical. Today we have taken a look at the Akko. PC 75B Plus version 2. This is the second incarnation that includes some improvements over the version 1. This is a top mount 3 mode 75% keyboard that includes per key RGB as well as downward facing RGB, IPXC PCB sheet, as well as a silicone dampener for the case. It has a 3000 milliamp hour battery and comes with both a polycarbonate case and plate. It also employs a Mac and Windows hardware switch. Also loaded with Akko ASA black and gold double shot PBT keycaps with an included 25 novelty keys. This keyboard does use Akko cloud software. It is available with either Akko CS crystal clear switches or their white wine switch. This keyboard MSRPs for $109.99 from Akko Gear. It comes in weighing at 993 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters from the typing surface, while the back sits at 33 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 7 degrees. Using the first included pair of flip-up feet, 
It will raise the back up to 40 millimeters, changing the default typing angle to 10 degrees. Using the last and final pair of feet, the back goes up to 48 millimeters while the typing angle changes to 13 degrees. So it has been a while since I've taken a, taken a look at the Akko Clown Driver software. It has changed and when I first looked at it, I missed um, and I thought they had taken out the layer functionality. They've just moved it over to what they call custom mode. So basically you have what you could consider two layers. One of them is with function and a key combination. The other one's with alt function. And a key combination so it seems to be I mean I know they tried to do it in the first one but there was issues I know I had a whole bunch of issues but um, they definitely upgraded the functionality the interface though could probably use a little bit of work as I mean the first time I took a letter I was like oh I guess they got rid of the functional layers uh, so I was a little confused um, and custom mode really doesn't apply it should be layers profile even makes more sense though now everybody knows profile is something else uh, but as with uh, the ability to uh, rebind keys and everything there is still no ability to control either the press of the knob by itself or function and the turning the knob and or um, pressing it so all you can really do is change what turning left or right on the knob does, whether it be a macro that you have for a program or just your volume or zoom or something like that. So, and they make it fairly easy. Um, they also have the per key RGB on the lighting and as well as the macros. And the update process seems to be uh, a lot easier, a lot better than it was before. And um, I updated the uh, firmware actually on my Aka 5075 as well so they've made huge improvements in the software since I last used it so today we took a look at the Aka PC 75B plus version 2 now I do have to say I think this is only the third maybe the fourth polycarbonate uh, keyboard case that I have but I've all, always enjoyed not only the feel of PC for the plates, but as well as the case. And I think that it, it lends itself, depending on how you want to mod it, I think one would be able to get either a really clacky sound through creamy and all the way through thocky because of the materials. Now, I definitely intend to come back to this keyboard and I'm going to be applying some mods and I'm going to see which one does better. Perhaps I'll do both. Try it for a clacky, try for a Baki, see what what I can get what this keyboard lends itself well to um, construction wise it seems to be very good I, I do like the big knob though I'm not a fan of the potentiator meter uh, being loose um, it is your standard six millimeter D knob with what looks to be about a three millimeter collar so you're probably gonna want to look for those dimensions it is a little bit wider as there is much more space there but if you're looking for a replacement I think a lot of the standard ones will work. I don't know why it flashes the light. This isn't the only Akko keyboard that I have that does this. Now, um, to compare, the only other Akko that I have that is, I guess, close would be the 5075B, um, though all they really share is the layout, being as this is an ABS case, it is much lighter, significantly lighter. Um, it does, I mean, it does have, you know, pretty much the same layout. The, the lights are in different places. This one, as I was talking about, um, where one of the members came up with a little straw hack with a tape wrapped around it to prevent the light leaking. And it also, this one also has down fi uh, firing LEDs. So, there to show you. So while this one has a whole entire side lights as well, I'm curious, because even the... Um, position of that switch seat. No, no, it's in a different spot. I was going to say these, I don't know if this light goes all the way around. I have not opened this. This is still in its stock form. I found the 5075S to be much nicer than the pre-built 5075B. Um, and yeah, this is stock and it's running, oh, Akko 
Taco CS Blues. So, that's completely stock. PC plate. So, this is a decent keyboard. Physically, this one is, is really nice out of all the non-metallic 75%. Um, I can't say this is the best, but from initial impressions, it's definitely up there. Uh, like I said, I've got some pretty cool mods, I think, planned for this. I do. I did not take a look at any videos, so I'm not sure if that's a daughter board or not. Though I know in here there is no daughter board, so I'm afraid that it doesn't have a daughter board, which isn't uh, isn't a showstopper, but I will have to do some work in here. Another little issue that I saw, there was a lot of USB cables that just would not fit in here, um, even though they would go in. Oh, that one fits. But if there's, see how there's very little room on either side. So, um, yes, the Aqua cable that came in the box fit. So, it's just something to consider if you have one of those nicer um, cables that has the recessed port. But, if for some reason you want to use one of those, you can always get a USB-C extender that buys you about an inch. So, you can go ahead and plug in, um, you know, and not have to worry about that. So, that's just something to consider. Uh, I do, Like I said, I do like the, uh, the translucency on this case. It's just the right amount for me anyway. Um, I think the lights are extremely bright. Um, they didn't even come at full brightness. I like this. I like this keyboard. I look forward to modding it. But, stock it does not sound that bad. It's not... Not anything that I'd say, hey, let's write home about. But it's definitely something that I think a lot of people would be able to just pull out of the box and get going with it. The stabs are nicely lubricated. Well, they're they're dabbed, but they work. Um, they could use a tad bit of tuning, but they are in no way, way awful. Um, these crystal switches, not too bad. A little lighter uh, than I like personally, but they're not a bad linear. Um, I question why crystal switches in this since it's not fully transparent, but I do know that a lot of people like them. And I mean, it definitely is not hurting with the RGB. <laughs> so um, that's probably the reason why. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test. I was going to do a sound test with another set of switches as well, but... I have so much to get to, but I will be coming back to this one. I'm going to be doing the tape mod. I'm going to be replacing the silicone that it has in there, and I'm probably going to be going for more of either a Thaki or Clacky sound profile. We'll see which one uh, comes out. I definitely will be replacing that knob. I've got some, some ideas for this to, um, to make it even, even better. But like I said, for right now, I'm just going to leave you guys with the stock sound test of the Akko PC75B Plus version 2 polycarbonate case and plate 75% top mount keyboard. I don't know why I thought this was tray mount. It's top mount. And I have halos that are modified top mount. But if this is a real true top mount, then I've got some other mods that I want to try out that I haven't had a chance to. So... This is going to be interesting coming to it. Let's just consider this the intro to this board. I do. They also did send me out the um, the uh, flex kit for the mod 007, which I just so happen to have here. Uh, it does remove the LEDs, but it provides a. Um, a flex cut PCB. Now granted I have an FR4 plate on here so I'm not sure how much difference it's gonna make. You know, it does have a little bit of flex now so I'm gonna guess that that flex kit is going to to make a difference um, and I look forward to giving that a shot because there's always been a place in my heart for this mod and any other mod series. They were nice keyboards at the price when they came out. I mean, all of them were sub $200 and all of them were big hunks of aluminum. So, uh, I, for one, was quite a fan. And they had some nice colors as well. Um, I don't think they're making them still. Maybe just this one, the 007. But I can't say. I'm not familiar enough with it. But I will be coming back to that one here. Uh, doing a guide update for applying the uh, Flex key, uh, 
the flex PCB, which I believe is a via PCB. But um, I think that's going to make a difference for that mod 007 as I've never quite been able to get it to sound where I'd like it to. But I think that flex PCB might just be the thing. Maybe it won't, but fingers crossed that it will. Anyway, leave you guys with the stock sound test. We, we're using the Akko Clear switches in here and we have the black and gold ASA double shot PBT so uh, love to know your guys's thoughts on this keyboard and if you have the V1 I'd love to hear what you think or what you you know you know of that's been changed between that one or this one and if you have anything for me to take a look at when I do open it up let me know down in the comments below and I'll do my best to you know do that once I open up the keyboard until the next transmission though Keep calm and keyboard on.